Welcome back to my Coloratura challenge. In the second part, we will be focusing on the classical era, where composers like Gluck, Haydn, Salieri, and Mozart led a very big revolution in the classical music, and in singing particularly. A very big music reform started, led by Gluck. He wished to put the drama on the front line and put a stop to the singer parade from the Baroque style. That means that coloraturas now serve another purpose, a more dramatic and emotional purpose, instead of just showing off your technical abilities. Coloraturas were still largely used in operas in order to help the dramatic effect or to indicate a specific characteristic of the role. Mostly we can encounter coloraturas in liturgical music, one of my favorite arias in liturgical music is the aria Laudamus Te from the Mass in Si bemol by Mozart. Knowing that Mozart was greatly influenced by Handel and Bach in those times, we can identify some influences in this aria from their music. This aria consists a great deal of coloratura passages that really similars a bit of Handel music and Bach music. So the whole structure of the capo arias with long fioratura and coloratura passages are gone. And instead came a new era of emotional music and dramatic music and singing. The best example for this kind of music is the opera Orfeo ed Oridice that composed Gluck. Other than the most famous aria from the opera, Che farò sensai Euridice, that sings Orfeo, Gluck composed another aria, a bit more virtuose, with a bit more coloraturas, only for the sake of old times entertainment from the Baroque style. Since the first Orfeo in this opera was sung by Castrato, it is only fair that he too will have the chance to show his brilliant technique even though this is exactly what Gluck wanted to change. Today this aria is rarely performed, but you mainly can hear it in the French version of the opera Orfeo e Duridice, and it is called Addio miei sospiri, Goodbye my woes. My absolute favorite version of this aria is sung by the American mezzo Marilyn Horn. Fortunately, like we will see later on, Gluck couldn't prevent the return of great coloratura arias. And with Rossini and the bel canto style, we witness the rebirth of coloratura singing and great coloratura passages. One of the most important revolutionaries in classical music and opera specifically was of course the composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. His most performed and well-known operas are his last ones, the Da Ponte cycle, La Clemenza di Tito, and of course, Die Zauberflute. And they are as difficult as operas can go. But also some of his earlier pieces are very difficult. One example is Mitridate Re di Ponto. This is the opera that Mozart composed when he was only 14. In this opera, there are some of the most difficult coloratura passages that take the mezzo line and the soprano line to the same tessitur, and together they form the most beautiful melodic sequences. Going on to the later operas of Mozart, there are some interesting coloratura passages that imply something on the characteristic of the roles. First example is Zerlina in Don Giovanni. In the first aria of Zerlina, Batti Batti, she is a bit flirty and she's trying to make peace with Mazetto. In the last part of her aria, there is some 
nice embellishments, nice coloraturas in the height as it were, that can sound a bit flirty and a bit playing like. In the Zauberflöte, we have the Queen of the Night in her second menacing aria that she implores Pamina to kill Zarastro. One of the more famous arias that Mozart wrote for a mezzo-sopran voice is Parto Parto from La Clemenza di Tito. This role was written for a castrato, Domenico Bedini. Mozart gave him a very nice passage in the end of Parto Parto that shows his brilliant technique. I will now take you to the practice room and present to you some of the exercises that helped me approach this aria. Before we go, I would like to draw your attention to two very important points about the learning and working process. Firstly, since every one of us has his own technique, vocal technique, it is very important to consult with your voice teacher and vocal coach to help you perform those exercises in a healthy way. All the exercises that I demonstrate in this platform are working very well for my voice and fit the repertoire that I perform. Therefore, it is very important that you choose carefully the exercises that fit you and your voice type. Secondly, and very, very important, you should have a lot of patience while working on coloratura. Working on coloratura is a very long process that demands self-discipline and a lot of practice time. You should keep in mind that it might take a while until you feel more comfortable singing coloraturas, and it is perfectly okay. So now, let us go to the practice room. There are two very well-known arias of Mozart that he uses the triola as, as um, a passage. Uh, one is um, Sesto's aria Parto Parto from La Clemenza di Tito, and the other one is in Fior di Ligi's aria uh, In Così Fan Tutte. They are both amazing arias, and if you ask me, triolas are the most difficult passages to sing, but you still have to practice them. So I have here several exercises that help me with triola practice. Most of the mezzos today know the aria parto parto, and every time we get to the end part, we're like, oh, those triolas. Why the hell would somebody write triolas as a coloratura passage? That I can understand that. Write four notes, write six notes, but three notes, seriously? It's like a punishment. So it starts in a fourth and then it goes in triolas. I just made it a short exercise that I can practice with in order to get it into my muscle memory. It goes like this. <laughs> Very simple, it takes exactly the structure of the whole sentence, like the whole passage. One very important thing that is important to do while you are practicing coloraturas is to change the rhythm change the vowel, add consonants, and change the tempo. This way, the structure of the sentence will get better into your uh, system. For example, Another thing that helps me very much is when there are a lot of leaps, jumps between uh, one note to another. It's really helpful to make a glissando of it, like do it very legato, 
in order to um, help us remember how far the jump is. So for example, it's like painting very long lines. Another thing that helps me is adding some consonants to those exercises then you really have the, the feeling that they are separated. <laughs> or ni 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 or di 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 di. So after practicing uh, in different rhythms with different vowels in different registers now you can go to the piece and start practicing on the actual passage. So if we take Sesto's aria, we'll go to the end of the aria where the coloraturas are and we'll try to use the tools of the exercise on the coloratura. <laughs> And then try it a bit faster. Another thing that really helps me when I uh, practice coloraturas is also practicing uh, trillo. It's a very long exercise, slow, it goes faster, it has to be very dynamic and you have to change it all the time, but it really helps to uh, release tension get the muscles and the larynx relaxed and put in the right place. Sometimes when I practice for long, um, the same uh, phrase or the same exercise, I get a bit tense. Uh, you're very focused on singing the right notes, but sometimes you have to take a break to restart. And I find that exercises with trilli are very helpful. So for me, the secret of Trilli is just let it go, like crazy vibration with a purpose, with a direction. Of course, when we practice it, we have to be very precise. We have to give a certain note to decide on a certain uh, vowel. And then we need to practice how to release that. Another trick that helps me a lot is practicing with staccato. <laughs> If you'd like 
to practice some basic exercises for coloratura, I warmly recommend to refer to books that present those exercises from the Baroque era and post-Baroque to beginning of the classical era. I got a very nice recommendation by a colleague of mine, thank you Ron Silberstein, for a very, very important book written by Manuel Garcia, which was the brother of Pauline Viardot and Maria Malibran, and probably was the most important voice teacher of the 19th century and the founder of the bel canto technique. The book is called The Art of Singing. You can get it online. This book suggests endless of exercises for coloratura and agility and also gives a lot of tips for technique practicing. Well, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed our second part of the coloratura challenge and I hope to see you at the third and most beautiful part where we explore the beautiful world of bel canto. Until then, stay safe and stay healthy. Oh.